Pepeway. I'm Cameron. I'm James. And we're going to be working on James's 350Z, the future sponsored by Jesus Racing. Formula Drift Car. We'll see how long it takes to get going. Uh, today, I've got a package from Z1 Motorsports. Big shout out to Z1. We've got excellent prices, free plug. Um, got some Kinetics upper A arms. I've already pressed in most of the energy suspension lower control arm bushings and thrust rod bushings for the front. I've also got the back knuckle, lower control arm, and upper control arm bushing set that we're gonna be working on sometime in the near future. In the package today, I got the, oh, I forgot the name of that part. What is the, what is the thing that holds the tires together, not the tie rod? It is the sway bar bushing, there we go. Took me a minute. Got the sway bar bushings from Energy Suspension as well. For factory sway bars, I'm not gonna upgrade them because this is going to be, for the time being, still a budget build. So we're gonna keep it on budget while doing a full polyurethane swap. And then I've got the power steering rack bushings ready to install. And we're about to start getting ready to rebuild a set of factory G35 two pot brake calipers for the front and I've got a set of factory 350Z rear brakes for the rear and possibly a dual caliper bracket because I've also got factory G35 rear bracket or uh, rear brake calipers. So we might be able to actually budget build this entire car into a drifting machine. So you heard that right. We are gonna be starting our, our own drift team and this is gonna be us going through the process. Yes, there will be videos sporadically, but you're really gonna to get to see the process of starting your budget drift team and how anyone can start and get there. And our team's name is gonna be sponsored by Jesus Racing and we're excited to reach the car. Hold up. Jesus. Hashtag sponsored by Jesus Racing. Get it right, man. Yeah, you know. It's what it is. So the Z's behind us, you've seen some of our videos in the past. We're doing some budget. It's gonna be painted with a full body kit as well. Uh, but I think the ultimate goal here is to show people that if you have any kind of extra income, you can build a legitimate race car that is also very streetable in the process so that you don't have to invest into a truck and a trailer to get to your events. You can just drive there with a reliable, streetable car that will perform well, possibly bring home some trophies on a very low budget. I'm trying to go into this less than 10 grand total before we get our first set of sponsors that wants to pay for more parts. So why don't you tell them how much, um, since we're gonna go be through in this uh, price point, how much did you pay originally pay for your car? All right, so the purchase price of this car does not reflect my $10,000 budget, but. I think it should. I think man, it should. It's possible. You know how many Zs are out here with blown engine you can rebuild? That's yeah, what I do, we're doing. I'm doing a forged internal engine. So ultimately I paid 3,500 for the car. No, that's wrong. I paid three grand for the car. It's got a rebuilt title, which is why I got it so cheap. It is a factory six speed manual. And I put about 10,000 miles on it before it blew up. Uh, pulled the motor, sold off all the body parts I intended to replace. I sold off the engine, clutch kit. I kept most of the accessories. I sold the wheels. I pulled most of the suspension off. We're doing refreshes with factory, most of the factory parts. And we have Eibach lowering springs on factory struts, upper control arms in the front that allow for camber adjustment and lower camber arms in the rear. I'm planning a Tomei differential, full energy suspension, polyurethane kit. Everything the car can have polyurethane swap is gonna happen. Uh, come on guys, energy suspension, throw us a bone here. We could use some help. It's expensive out here. Um, and then uh, I'm just gonna do a factory motor. It's a VQ35 DE. I know a lot of you don't like the DE engines, but they're cheap, they're easy, they make decent power. And then it's gonna have some accessories in a tune. I'm looking for about 300 wheel horsepower to get it going where we're trying to go, which is very attainable. If I only make 275, I'll be happy. Yep. So thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy this video. It's gonna be an exciting adventure. All right. <clears throat>
that'll make aligning it pretty easy. My ultimate goal is to have factory suspension settings on lowering springs so that it will handle the way it was made to handle for our initial test runs and then we can work from there instead of trying to set some crazy setup from the very beginning. Cars were built to handle really well from the start. Factory, um, having some tubular members with adjustability is just gonna be a big, big help though. And these kinetics control arms come with a lock-in ball joint. So once it's set, it has no physical way to unset as well as greasable bushings from Energy Suspension. These are Energy Suspension branded bushings. The grease fitting, the shove grease down in there, that keeps them fresh all the time. Nice little caps. And then they don't come with new bolts, so you gotta use your factory bolts, but we're gonna go ahead and get at least one side of the suspension assembled. And then we're probably gonna go ahead and pull the core support out the other end if I have enough strength to pull the core support bolts out. If not, we'll get the uh, air compressor and the air tools in here and make that happen sometimes sometime real soon. So tell me what you're trying to do here. Well, one of the things that I'm is hoping these bolts fit, because like a total noob, I didn't organize my bolts before I disassembled the car. I just started taking bolts out and putting them somewhere. Is it like the right bolt? It's not. Uh, but I'm installing the upper A arm. So, I'm installing the upper A arm. I always set it for factory adjustments as close as possible, anyway. Is that going? So, I'm just going to have to. Kind of work this in a little bit and work it out a little bit and back in and out and in and out because you know she likes the good all in and out. Okay, man. Hey, okay. Hey, hey, hey. So while I'm doing this, because it's going to take a minute, I'm going to spin you a yarn. I'll tell you a story in Southern Talk. Let's hear this yarn you have. This is my inspiration for wanting a 350Z. Everyone's got that story of the, their first car that made a real impression on their life. And the 350Z was it for me. I've loved it ever since I, uh, ever since I remember seeing my first one. And, uh, you know, Tokyo Drift was a big influence on me. I know a lot of y'all haters out there don't like that one, but it's the best. It is the best. It is. I, it's I, the I, best. I haven't known many of who said it's not the best. And while I absolutely love the original crew and the family that they built. The only possibly realistic racing movie from the Furious franchise in any way is Tokyo Drift. But me and my friend Alex, and we're gonna rem we're gonna keep him at a first name. You know who you are. When we were, I think I was 17, and he was 16. We were in high school. In a city that shall not be named. We went up to the local Nissan dealership because a lot of the mechanics there were like 240 guys and had their, uh, had their project cars and all that stored in the back. And we were terrible hold on, hold on. people. What year is this? 2007. You heard it first. He was in high school in 2007. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. Make me feel really young. <laughs> so anyways, we went to the local dealership at about one in the morning and uh, there was a break in the fence that may or may not have been put there by human hands. The world may never know. And we snuck through this break that we knew about. And we're just, we're gonna go be scumbags. We're gonna go steal a bunch of car parts and put them on eBay out of the junk cars and the parts cars in the back. And so we get back there and we're kind of rummaging around the 240s and the Maximas and all the classic era Nissan cars. Is it pre Brotax on those? This is way pre Brotax. You could still buy a 240SX for like $1,500. I bought my first 240 for $1,000 and it needed one thing to run. And, uh, 
progress here. Anyways, behind the body shop of this Nissan dealership, there is this pristine, beautiful 2006 350Z missing a front bumper. So me and Alex were like, we had literally just watched Tokyo Drift the day before. We're back there being hooligans and we see it and we're just like, oh dude, this is gorgeous. So we're playing with it, we're looking at it, admiring it, and I just happened to try to pop the door and it's unlocked. And so like, we're super excited, we get in, we're chilling. Like, man, this is really nice, this is dope. He's sitting in the passenger seat. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, wouldn't it be funny if the keys were somewhere in the car? And they fell into my lap. So you're saying they were actually in the visor. I am saying they were legitimately in the visor. So I don't know his job. All those 2000s movies where everyone just randomly gets in a car and pulls keys Dude, out of the Dude, it really happened that way, man. Dude, look, man. Movies are cliche because that's how it is in real life. Oh, God. Okay? <laughs> it really did happen that way. So we started it and we took it on a joyride. We ended up putting it back. It was a six speed. It was fun. But it was bright yellow, so we knew we couldn't do too much. And uh, we put it back where we found it and left it there. And uh, hopefully, nobody lost their job over that. And as I look back at this, we really were scumbagging it up. But that was my first interaction with the Z, and I wanted one ever since that point in my life. And then when I got married, my beautiful wife bought me our first car as a family purchase. We, went, we drove two and a half hours to buy this sick, nasty $3,000 350Z with a six speed manual and no issues. <laughs> and I as told, you can see, well, we've been praying about the car, and my wife specifically had been praying to find one for 3000 and she told me, she said, talk to me about price, if I let it go for three, let's go get it, and I said, okay. So, I made him the offer, I said, this is what I've got, I can come today, I called into work, when he agreed, a two and a half hour drive up, my wife has never driven a car in her life at this point, by the way. Turns out that it is the right bolt. So anyways, we put it back. What was that? I was clapping for you finding the right bolt. Oh yeah. Anyways, we put the car back, went about our business. Didn't really talk about it that much. Probably still hadn't talked about it. <sighs> Didn't get in any trouble. Never heard anything back about it, but just ever since then I wanted one. My wife bought it. This no problem Z really ended up having zero issues. It was totally legit. The purchase was great. I drove up to this area of rural Alabama and I drove it around the block, went to Advance Auto Park. Checked the engine light. Something that I knew to be super common on these cars. What's that? I can't tell you if I wanted to right now. It was, yeah I can, it was the camshaft position sensor, which has a tendency to go out and cause an issue, and I was like, well, it runs fine, it's not overheated yet, let's see if we can get it home. So we made our best attempt and we made it home with no issues, it didn't overheat and put it in the driveway, drove it to work the next day, and my manager was super pissed off that I called out, and then I show up in a new car and he's still mad, but he's like, no, his car broke. <laughs> and 10,000 miles later, the motor blows because this, as I'm coming through, it used to actually be a drift car, so we're just kind of continuing it along its race car life from the previous owners who ran the dog crap out of it and didn't take care of it or change the oil. So, that's kind of where we're at right now. And all we're doing at this point is just getting it put back together so that we can get it back on the ground. I'd like to see this thing sitting on the ground by July. And we're about $400 away from that being a reality. How far am I in it? I'm only in it 
100, it's a total of 400. So far I'm 500 in, and we're talking about a full suspension car for less than $1,000 minus coilovers. Because the reality of the situation is unless you're spending three to 4,000 on coilovers, you're just buying something with a preset spring that can be lowered. The factory coils are much better for performance. It doesn't matter what kind of driving you're doing. Drifting, it's different because you do need it stiffer, but that doesn't mean it's going to handle any better. So keep that in mind. Unless you're really trying to buy a race setup, you're just buying an adjustable lowering thing. It doesn't matter if the dampening is adjustable or not. Your economy level coilovers may improve your performance, but ultimately they're not going to be as good as your factory stuff. In my humble opinion, I'm no professional. <laughs> I think basic research agrees. Yeah. We'll see how that goes when it's all back together. But the polyurethane bushings are going to make a big difference. Yeah, they really do. Good luck, my guy. Yeah, right? I know. I gotta find these ones. Gotta find these big guys. You switch back over here. I can't get a good angle over there. so much for watching and it's another great episode of watching James tell stories and try and do a little bit. I mean as you can see we got a little bit done. So well we got the core support on, we got the upper gauge roll arms on. Uh kind of learning some lessons here today. Not really happy about it, but we'll get it figured out. Yeah, we learned. 
We learned all about bolt organization. Yeah, so we need to take things apart, organize, organize them, label them, put them in Ziploc bags, write on them with Sharpie markers, or put them back where they came from so that they're just kind of hanging out with everything else. That's probably the best thing is if you take a bolt off and remove a piece, put the nut back on or put the yep. bolt back in the hole if you can. Yep. I think that's the best. We're going to end up with a lot of new hardware on this thing. Yeah, I'm thinking about trying to find an all-new bolt kit right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already pretty All right, well, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe for lots of new content coming. Yeah. And check us out here on our Instagram. And now we're going to go over to James for the verse of the day. My favorite part. Love you. Bye. Hey, guys. James here, Project Paperweight, with the verse of the day. Today, we're going to do Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Do not worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for the things you already have. And honestly, my life is a living testament to the validity of this specific verse. Everything that I own is things that I have prayed about, I have asked God for. And while I don't believe that God is Santa Claus, I do believe that He is our provider. And when we don't have the means to get things that we need ourselves and we tell Him, I genuinely believe He's going to bring it to the forefront. That's why we're supposed to thank Him for everything we have. Because we can't receive unless we're already thankful for the blessings that he's bestowed on us. But we're supposed to tell him. I made a list, just kind of threw it out into the air, of about 20 different things that we needed when I got married. And today, I have received every single one of those things without spending a dime because the generosity of the people around me being the hands and feet of God's kingdom. So until next time, just remember, if you're in need, or even if you just have a want, just tell God, throw it up in prayer and leave it with him. See what he does with it and trust that he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and that he will send the things that we need and desire in great abundance. Until next time, we'll see you later. Have a great day.